Howdy everyone, my name's Chris and today I'm looking at Canon's newest ultra wide angle lens, the 10 to 18 mm f 4.5 to 5.6 IS STM. This is an EFS lens, so it will not work with Canon's expensive full frame cameras. And one of the key selling points of this lens is its low price. I got my copy for £250, which seems to be very good value, but in America it's only $300, which is even cheaper. You jammy Americans, well, whatever. Everyone loves an ultra-wide angle lens. They can be fun and very useful. A typical Canon kit lens can zoom as wide as 18mm, as you can see here, which isn't really amazingly wide. Well, this new lens starts from 18mm and zooms back to 10mm, giving you a huge field of view. It's super useful if you're shooting in tight spaces or if you're somewhere really big and you want a broader picture. And this particular lens has some features which could make it very useful for video work. More on that later. One of the slight letdowns of this lens is that it has a relatively narrow maximum aperture, which means it doesn't let in much light. The maximum aperture is f4.5 at 10mm, darkening to f5.6 as you zoom in to 18mm. And the zoom range of 10 to 18mm is not especially impressive either. However, I've mentally made peace with this lens's rather narrow parameters. Having a narrow maximum aperture and zoom range means that this lens can be smaller, lighter, cheaper, and potentially have better image quality, since it's much easier for lens manufacturers to actually design a slower camera lens with a shorter zoom range. I think there's a philosophy behind this lens that it might be a part of introducing ultra-wide angle photography to a wider market which could only be a good thing. Well, anyway, philosophy aside, let's take a proper look at it. The build quality of this lens is quite nice, considering its relatively low price. It's not too big, it's fairly light, and its fit and finish are good, being made of quite good quality plastics. The zoom ring is very nice and smooth to use, which could be useful for video work. The lens uses Canon's new STM autofocus system, as someone who does tons of video work, I've grown to absolutely love STM. It gives you completely silent and quite fast autofocusing. Even if the lens is micro-adjusting while you're shooting video, in this example on a Canon 70D, you don't hear any noise at all and it works very smoothly. The autofocus system performed very accurately on my copy of the lens. The focus ring is electronically coupled to the STM autofocus motor, so as a side result it turns extremely smoothly, although unfortunately you don't get any distance markings. The lens does have full-time manual focusing, but only while you're half pressing the camera's shutter button. The front element of the lens does not extend or rotate as you change focus, which is a major relief for people using polarizing or graduating filters. So, the focus mechanism is great overall, and especially good for video work. Another great feature for video work and for still photography is image stabilization. Here's some handheld video footage at 10mm without stabilization. I'm holding the camera as steady as possible, but as you can see, there's still a little waving shakiness. Turn image stabilization on, and the footage becomes perfectly still. This is a nice little improvement for video work, and the stabilization doesn't make any noise during use, either. Image stabilization is also fantastic for stills photography. I managed to use it to get this handheld picture with a shutter speed of 2 full seconds. Here's the same picture without image stabilization. So, even on an ultra-wide angle lens, IS can be a seriously nice feature. There is a plastic lens mount, which is a tiny bit disappointing for some people, but we can consider that acceptable in such an inexpensive lens. Some people freak out about plastic lens mounts, but they're really not that bad. Just don't go throwing the lens at things you don't like, and it'll be fine. Overall, this is a nicely made lens with some excellent features for still photography, and it's particularly good for video work. Ok, let's take a look at image quality. I'll be testing this lens on a 20 megapixel Canon 70D. Firstly, let's look at the performance at 10mm. With the aperture wide open at f4.5, the lens is very sharp in the middle of the image, with average colours and contrast. The corners of the image are a little softer, but still very good. 
As you can see in the window frames, there is some noticeable pink and green chromatic aberration popping up, about the average amount for an ultra-wide angle lens. If you have a recent Canon camera, then the excellent news is that you can get rid of these tray colours using chromatic aberration correction on the camera. But at the time of this review, Canon haven't released the lens profiles yet, so I can't try it out. Well anyway, stop the lens down to f5.6 for more brightness and a little more sharpness in the corners, and stopped all the way down to f11, those corners are as sharp as they're going to get. So overall, at 10mm, the lens gives you lots of resolution with a little boost in the corners when you stop down. It's a pity about the chromatic aberration, but overall it's a very good performance. Well, let's zoom in to 18mm. At f5.6 and in the middle of the image, again, the lens is razor sharp. The corners are not quite as punchy, but they're still very good indeed. Unfortunately, the lens is still dealing with chromatic aberrations. Stop down to f8 and the corners are super sharp, and it's the same story at f11. So it's a very sharp performance from the lens at 18mm, just like at 10mm. This is definitely a nice, sharp lens, although I can't wait for Canon to bring out a lens profile so my camera can correct that chromatic aberration. Alright, let's look at vignetting and distortion. At 10mm, the lens presents a gentle barrel distortion, which pinches just a little more in the corners, but nonetheless, it's not too disturbing. At f4.5, however, we're presented with some pretty strong vignetting, or dark corners. Stop down to f5.6 and the corners are much brighter, and at f8 the vignetting is finally gone. You can use peripheral illumination on your camera to automatically correct this when Canon finally come up with a lens profile in the EOS utility. Zoom into 18mm and distortion becomes negligible, although at f5.6 there's still a lot of vignetting. So it's a good enough performance for distortion, but the vignetting levels are cause for concern. This lens can focus fairly closely to your subject, which is useful for getting some interesting perspectives in your pictures. At f5.6 there is sharpness, but not much contrast. Stop the lens down to f8 for a major improvement and good close-up picture quality. When working against bright lights, the lens holds on to its good contrast levels, but you do see some very noticeable flaring, which can easily pop up in everyday photos, what with this being such a wide-angle lens. Finally, it's very difficult to get an out-of-focus background with this lens, what with its narrow maximum aperture and wide-angle zoom range. When you do, the quality of the out-of-focus areas, or the bokeh, is very nice and smooth. So then, the Canon 10-18mm ISSTM is a great value and rather capable ultra-wide-angle lens. Optically, it's quite average in some ways, but it's also impressively sharp, which is the main thing, because while other optical problems can be sorted out by your camera or in photo editing software, they can never replace a loss of detail. The zoom range and maximum aperture of this lens are both a bit limited, but that's made up for by its low price, nice build quality, and image stabilization. Video makers will particularly appreciate that, as well as other good features of the lens. So if you're looking for an inexpensive ultra-wide angle lens, or one especially suited for video work, then you can't really go wrong with a Canon 10-18mm, it's pretty much your best option.